Yes, villagers. Today we're going to be talking about four things I think that you need inside of your wealth kit. If you want to find out if you have some of those things already or what to include, you are in the right place. If you're new to this channel, welcome to our village. If you're a returning villager, welcome as well. So let's get into it. Welcome to Garden of the Mind, where we reduce stress, improve our health and fitness, and improve our financial IQ every episode. What is wealth? I love Chris Rock's analogy. He says that basketball players are rich. The people who sign their checks are wealthy. So we want to get to a point of being wealthy. Now for me, that means you are no longer working for your money, but your money is working for you. So while you are sitting back doing whatever it is that you're doing, money is being accumulated. So you no longer have to trade time for dollars in order for you to be wealthy. Now COVID has restructured our time for us to become wealthy. Now wealth for me is not, look how nice my house is, look how nice my car is, look how big my boat is, look I got a private jet, look how much money I make, look at the jewelry that I have. That is vanity. I don't believe that we are wealthy so that we can be vain. I believe that we are wealthy so that we can do more of God's will and we can change this world and make it much better than how we received it. Now, COVID has given us our first tip, which is time. Now, contrary to popular belief, COVID did not give us any extra time. We've had the same 24 hours before COVID as we have after COVID. COVID has allowed us to look at our 24 hours a bit different. So it has restructured the way we see things and the way we see life as a result. If you want to find out about somebody, you look at how a person spends their time and their money. That tells you a whole lot about people. So how are you spending your time at this point? Are you spending time with your loved ones? Are you spending time with your friends? Are you rekindling old friendships? I think COVID has shown us the value of relationships. Tip number two, your treasure. What is your treasure? What is the end goal for you? What is it that you need to get out of life? before you move on to the next phase. This time that we've been given has given us an opportunity to reflect on all that we are doing and for some of us, the possible insanity that we've been using on a day-to-day -day basis to get to a goal that we haven't even planned for. So are we planning at this point in time to look at our goals, figure out what our treasure is going to be? What criteria would you use to determine whether you did a good job with your life? Tip number three, talent. Now God is the perfect baker. He gave us a little bit of patience, a little bit of faith, a little bit of love, and each one of us has all of these other different ingredients and skills, strengths and weaknesses to make us completely individual. Now also, all of those skills can make us a million dollars. We have to figure out what our purpose is. How can we use our skills that God has given us in order for us to achieve those things? Now remember, the Bible says God has given us the power to get wealth. Now that trip is not going to be easy. That journey is not going to be an easy one. However, it's going to be so much easier when you tap into the reason why you were created and what your purpose is here in this life. Tip number four, a relationship with God. There are so many references in the Bible that speaks about God and money and speaks about how challenging it is in order for you to have both. Because for some of us, those two can be mutually exclusive. Most people who don't have a lot of money usually have a lot of God. Those people who have a lot of money may not have a lot of God. It depends exactly what your makeup is, but it's certainly difficult for you to have a lot of money and still have faith as well. Why? Because you're able to do so many things with your money that most people can only pray about. 
Now, if you have a relationship with God, you know that that has to be absolutely primary because after a while, the money starts to roll in, the fame starts to roll in, and the ego starts to roll in, and all of a sudden, you start to think that you did this all by yourself, and that's absolutely not the case. We have to remember that we were blessed and that blessing has come from somewhere. It's come from God. So the blessings are the gift. The wealth is the gift. The giver is God. There's a saying that goes a little something like, God gives you the gift of life. Whatever you do with that life is your gift to God. Now there's a saying that says, power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. There is none of us who is too far from that happening to us. If we have the power to make everything that we've ever wanted to come true, and we have the money and the means to make that happen, we start to experience ego. And once we start to experience that ego and that power, we start to get corrupt. God has to be your anchor in order to keep you away from this corruption and keep you on the straight and narrow. What things would you add to your wealth set? Put that in the comments. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you want to know when I post, which is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, please click on that notification bell so you will be the first one to know exactly what it is that we spoke about here. And remember, thoughts are actions, words have power, and actions have consequences. I'll see you for Fit Fridays where we'll show you exactly how to get rid of back problems forever. I'll see you then.